Hey there. Uh, I'm just uh, posting another video uh, to let everyone know how things are going since I'm home from the hospital. Uh, today is Tuesday, April 16th, and it is exactly one week and one day since the takedown of my ostomy. Um, and I've been using my J pouch almost a week now. I started eating basically last Wednesday. Uh, today's Tuesday, so um, things have been going, knock on wood, amazingly well. Um, I'm not sure I ever really thought about how things were going to progress or what I'd be feeling um, anatomically after the surgery, um, but I'm just very, very pleasantly surprised with how well uh, things have been going. Um, my last video, I think, was in the hospital on Wednesday. Uh, I was actually discharged from the hospital Friday about lunchtime. Um, and since I've been home, um, my frequency of going to the bathroom has decreased quite a lot. I think the most I went in the hospital was 16 times the first day. Um, and I apologize to friends and family who maybe just wanted to find out how I'm doing. Um, but this next section is kind of going to be more for people who uh, are maybe going to be undergoing this and are wondering the specifics of what they're going to be feeling and what they're going to be experiencing. So things might be a little explicitly um, described as far as with what's going on. Um, but anyways, the most I went was 16 times and that was pretty much the first day. Since then, things have um, come down. I would say on average, I'm going about 10 times in a 24-hour period. Um, and for the most part, I would say 80 to 90% of the time, the stool is formed in some way or shape. Um, one or two times, it's been sort of like toothpaste consistency. Other times, it's more like little rabbit turds as someone else had described but they kind of fall apart once they hit the water but I can tell that they're formed. Um, I've still had a couple times of more or less not water but runny um, and that's partly I think with my diet because I tried some oatmeal just to see if that would thicken things up but I realized there's some fiber in there and that did cause some increased gas and, and things. Um, but Basically, yeah, I mean, I only expect the frequency to get continue to get less. It's only been a week. Um, the dreaded butt burn really only lasted, I would say, the first couple days is when it was really bad. Um, and since then, I've been using less and less Calmoceptine on my backside. Um, and again, I'm going to get pretty descriptive here. Um, the part that's taken the longest to get better as far as the butt burn is basically right around the sphincter. That was all very raw. Um, and so a couple days ago I started alternating between the Kelmoseptine and the Vaseline just using a Q-tip to apply in there. Um, and it's been getting much, much better. Um, it was actually so sore and raw at one point, um, it, it hurt to just contract that sphincter muscle. Um, but since that's gotten better, um, I've noticed better control, if you will. Um, in the hospital, the new sensations and feelings are, you're trying to kind of get used to all of them, to, to weed out what's post-surgical, what's gas, what is the new feeling that I actually have to go to the bathroom. Um, there's kind of a lot of feelings going on in there, plus you have all that added swelling in there, which puts pressure on nerves and things like that. So the sensations are kind of odd. Um, and I didn't want to go to the bathroom every single time I had the urge, because I would say initially three to four times an hour I was getting an urge or a gas pain um, that I would just kind of try and contract muscles and, and hold things still and kind of breathe through it. Um, and they'd last anywhere from 10 to 20 seconds sometimes. I was just trying to count and breathe through them. Um, these really started to improve. That was probably Wednesday. Uh, I got home Friday. It was probably Saturday into Sunday. 
the frequency of those sensations and urges started going down, um, the intensity started going down, and I'm assuming part of it was because gas was, was working its way out, um, and swelling in my abdomen was going down. So that was taking pressure off nerves, nerves and things. Um, the, the really amazing thing about this J pouch is that um, you, you may have the urge to go, or at least in my experience, I have the urge to go sometimes, and I'm able to just contract those muscles, the, the sphincter muscles, your pelvic floor muscles, and, and hold it. And then within a couple seconds, the urge goes away. So the other day I was out walking and felt like, mm, maybe I need to go to the bathroom and had an immediate flashback to colitis of, oh my God, it's coming, I need to find the bathroom, where's the bathroom? But that, that urgency intensity is completely gone. Um, and it's, it's a completely different feeling. It's a very good feeling um, to be able to control that and realize, oh, okay, I need to go to the bathroom probably when I can get to one. Um, and I go next Tuesday uh, for my follow-up and get my staples removed, and so I'm going to ask the, the nurse some questions. Um, but like today, I was out walking and stuff, and I seem to be going every two hours or so. Um, and after I get past two hours, it seems to be that's, you'll start to get a little bit more, uh, the, the, um, those sensations will come a little bit more often, which I'm learning kind of means that, okay, you probably do really need to go. It's not just your pouch trying to get used to things. Um, but today I was able to, to hold off those urges for a whole extra hour, so I pushed it to like three, three and a half hours. Again, no one told me that you should be holding them or not holding them or anything. Um, but I do remember hearing on someone's video that he realized, he notices when he's home that he tends to go to the bathroom more because when he gets the urge, the bathroom's there and he just goes. But yet when he's at work or out somewhere, he goes less. And it's because if the urge comes, it's pretty quick and you're doing something else. So you take your mind off it. And it's because you're able to hold it, um, it's not an issue. So... Uh, I also, in my head, think that if I'm holding it a little longer, maybe that's helping stretch the pouch out a little bit. I don't know if that's the case, um, but in my head it makes theoretical sense. Um, I, ha I did have, in the hospital one night, and then Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night when I got home, um, I had leakage. And it was more than leakage, I basically pooped, pooped my pants. <laughs> Um, all those nights and I was prepared for that because I've been I still sleep in depends in case because the nurse had told me especially patients who have had the hand sewn technique where the physician the surgeon hand sewed the small intestine bottom of the J pouch to the anal cuff um, you can have some issues with leakage up to eight months after she did say usually it's just a little bit of seepage at night she said not a huge loss of stool or anything so I'm assuming what I'm experiencing is just because it, everything is so fresh right now. Um, but last night I didn't have any issues. So uh, I also started a couple days ago because um, I'm a physical therapist. So one of my physical therapy coworkers who I used to work with happens to deal with um, women's health issues and pelvic floor muscles. She mainly deals with um, females with loss of bladder after pregnancy, uh, postpartum bladder leakage, and issues related to pelvic floor muscles. And she had sent me an email and she said, don't forget to be doing your Kegels um, where you tighten those pelvic floor muscles to strengthen them. And I really didn't, I had thought about it, but I'm like, yeah, okay, those muscles are strong. I mean, I had colitis and had to squeeze my butt cheeks together for, you know, years sometimes trying to get to a bathroom. Um, but what I noticed is especially because the, the anal area, the sphincter, was so sore and raw from uh, using it again with the, the, when a stool was really liquidy, it hurt to contract it. And then also I realized in my second surgery, um, they had the anus stretched open with, I'm assuming with retractors, because they did work through 
through the anus up into um, where the J pouch attaches to the anal cuff muscles. So just the fact of all that trauma being forced and stretched open and held open, not being used. I really haven't used um, those sphincter muscles since uh, last September. I mean, I passed mucus here and there, but not like passing stool. So my point with this is in the past couple of days, I've really been focusing on those Kegel exercises and it's not squeezing your butt cheeks together. It's using that muscle that you use to stop the flow of urine and holding that anywhere from five to 10 seconds. Um, and I've noticed that it's actually helped in passing stool also, because what was happening is I would just sit down and, and the sphincter would just open and whatever was there would fall out. Um, but normally, you know, when you go to the bathroom, I know for some of us, normally in the bathroom is, is a subjective term, but you, you do contract and relax that sphincter muscle and that action of contracting and relaxing, to me at least, seems to massage the bottom of the, the small bowel, which helps work some of the stool out. Um, so I've, I've noticed much better control um, with those muscles and much better feeling um, on how to manage it because passing the stool with the J pouch is a little, it's, it's different than having the colon and one of my friends who's had this done also had said she sometimes feels like she hasn't completely emptied the pouch and I didn't really understand what she meant but since I've been home I've noticed I'll sit down go to the bathroom and get up and maybe start to clean clean myself and then realize oh I need to go again um, and part of that is learning to use those muscles again to help push the stool down um, without grunting and straining, but you still do contract those muscles to push stool out. So um, it's all kind of a big learning curve here and adjustments and things, but I'm definitely, I'm kind of noticing this kind of a learning curve. Um, not so slow right now, but pretty, pretty steep, which I'm very happy with. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, but my diet, I'm staying pretty bland right now because like I said, I tried the oatmeal one day and had kind of a lot of gas and that increased the frequency. Um, so I'm trying to stay away from anything like that. Lots of like sandwiches with bread and chicken, um, salmon, uh, steamed vegetables, um, just things, you know, bulky, starchy things. Um, sleep hasn't been too bad. Um, the, I'm getting probably four, three to four hours before I, I have to get up. Um, those nights where I did have stool leakage, it was after I had slept for four hours. And I, like I said, I think, especially initially, there's only so much room in that pouch. So if, you, if I fell into a deep sleep and I don't have good control of my sphincter muscles or didn't, um, I could see how that, you know, would just push something out and you, you know, that's what happened. So, um, hopefully that's passed, especially with the, the control issues that I've learned to kind of um, work those muscles a little more. Um, other than that, the staples are starting to irritate me a little bit. I can tell that that incision is healing because um, things are getting tight when I get out of the shower and, and pulling and things like that. I feel like if I try to stand up fully straight, it pulls and it's sore, which kind of happened with the last incision. So I'll be glad to get those out next Tuesday. Um, I think that's it for now. I'll show you my incision um, in a minute. But uh, I wanted to touch on one other thing too. When I got home from the hospital, um, there was also a big emotional uh, adjustment. For me, it's been seven months since I started this whole surgical thing, but that's not including all of the mental preparation going into making this decision and, you know, the years of, of colitis. And I know there's a lot of you out there who may have been in a worse situation than I've been or have been gotten stuck in the middle of all these surgeries somewhere because of medical complications and things like that. So, um, you know, kudos to all of us for getting through 
whatever it is we're able to get through. But my point was when I got home, it was just, um, it was pretty emotional to, to be able to look down and know that that bag is gone now um, after seven months. And I was out walking the other day and just it just kind of hit me that my colitis is gone. Um, this long journey is basically at an end. I mean, there's an adjustment period here, but um, I was out walking and I didn't have to run to the bathroom. I have no colitis. I didn't have a bag on the side of me. Um, I didn't have to worry about a leak. Um, and it's just, it's, it's a, it's a really good place. It's kind of taking me back to after my first surgery when I got home. I remember I was kind of on a high after having my colon removed thinking, oh, finally, that's gone. That irritating disease is, is finally out of me and this is kind of that next final step. So um, I will keep you all posted. Like I said, my two week check is next Tuesday. So I'll keep you posted as to what they have to say at that time um, and I think the last thing is I'm just going to show you my incision the lighting kind of makes it look a little I think more disfigured than it actually is um, but I'll show you what I mean here um, obviously my modeling days for the ab roller are over with um, but you can see um, sorry, I'm trying to make sure I can see the screen so I know what I'm pointing at. Um, there's 10 staples in here and it's still swollen and puffy all through here, you can tell. Um, part of, I think, the shape of this, it looks a little flat and I think that's because I was using the convex bags and the flanges and had to really push in the skin. My hope is that that will pop back out as the swelling goes down and things but you know from the side it doesn't look it looks pretty symmetrical to the other side that's why I said the light looks kind of funny on how it's playing on the angles here um, looks like I have a hockey puck under my skin but this is all I mean it's all squishable I can push on it um, so Hopefully, like I said, after these staples come out, I'll be able to do some stretches and scar massage and stuff like that. Even though this is pretty noticeable, um, it's actually pretty flat, this whole scar is. So I'm hoping that also happens um, on that section. So, uh, until next time, again, and as always, if you have any questions um, or comments, please feel free to uh, write them below the video or hit me up. I know a couple of people have emailed me and uh, they're either going in for their second or their third surgery or they're just going in for their first or they've had their surgeries done and it's great to hear um, these different stories um, from people because this is not an easy decision and it's not an easy journey but now being at the very end of it um, I wouldn't have made any other decision. Uh, I'm kind of taken back to when I was trying to make this decision and was contemplating it even three years ago, um, the nurse had given me the phone numbers and names of a couple patients that were willing to talk to me who had had this done. And I remember just asking all these questions of everything of like, well, you know, how is it afterwards? And well, is it better than having colitis? And you know, what are you, if you don't know the outcomes and blah, 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 and all this uncertainty and everything, just thinking, gosh, how can someone make this decision? Now that it's done, um, like I said, I wouldn't change anything. And if you're battling, if you have the choice and you're battling with the colitis and the drugs and things like that, it's not a bad decision. There are risks involved, of course, as there are with any surgery and not every case comes out Perfectly. I'm not really sure how mine's going to end, at least with the final result of my J pouch, but um, it's not as scary of, a, of an option as, as you think it is. Um, I know I thought, oh my God, having my colon out, this is life changing, and you know, what, it, what am I going to do? Sometimes the devil you know is better than the devil you don't, but um, 
looking back, I can say that I'm glad that I made the decision. Um, I'm glad to be rid of the colitis. I'm glad to be off the medications. I'm glad to have the cancer risk gone. Um, and uh, I know I keep repeating myself, but it's, it's true, I wouldn't change a thing about it. So, okay, once again, I've been very long-winded. Um, so I'll be chatting with you probably in about a week. Take care.